Hello and welcome to the Man of the Month series. I'm so excited that you're here and I'm your host Michelle Marchant Johnson and our Man of the Month for this month is the wonderful Roy Biancalana. Welcome Roy. <laughs> it is wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to be honored to be Mr. July and uh, I hope I can live up to the pressure. <laughs> it should be a fun discussion. Well, it is. It is pressure to be one of those select 12 for this yeah. month of 2020. And we're honored and excited to have you and to feature you for the July Man of the Month. So thanks so much for joining us, Roy. Oh, wonderful. And I'm super excited about our topic today, too. We'll get into that in a second. But first, I want to just give a little formal introduction. I know so many of the people watching are going to be familiar with you and your work. But just to make things official, we'll still do the formal intro. So, Roy Biancalana is a certified relationship coach and the number one best selling author of three books, the latest of which is Relationship Boot Camp Hardcore Training for Life, Love, and the Pursuit of Intimacy. <laughs> I like that title. That's great. For the past 15 years, Roy's mission has been supporting single people in the art of attracting and creating healthy, sustainable, intimate relationships. In addition to his individual work with clients, Roy has group coaching programs called Online Relationship Boot Camps. These are six-week programs that offer all of the benefits of private coaching, but for a fraction of the cost. Roy lives near Chicago, Illinois with his wife, Mary Margaret, and his son, Eric, is 25 years old and lives in Birmingham, Alabama. So welcome once again, Roy, and I'm super excited about our topic today. Yeah. Yeah, it's great to be here. And this topic, um, you know, I like to go deep. I mean, I often joke that nobody has fun playing in the baby pool. If you want to have fun, you go in the deep end. And that's what we're going to do today. Awesome. I love it. I love to go deep too. So this topic is so powerful. And I really feel like this topic is one of the most needed topics out there. So I'm really excited we're going to talk about this. It's called The Secret Sauce of the Feminine, How to Open, How an Open Trusting Heart Evokes a Man's Full Devotion. So first of all, Roy, um, I know that you've been exclusively working with single people over the last 15 years. You've also written these three best-selling books. So you have a lot of experience with single people out there, which obviously is why we're featuring you as the man of the month for this month. So based on all of that and based on your experience in working with people, what is the number one issue that keeps women from attracting a healthy, sustainable, intimate relationship? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I have been doing this a long time. And you wouldn't think it would be easy to identify one issue, but there really is one issue that comes up nine out of 10 times. It's, it's so powerful. It's so pervasive. And it's basically this. What I have experienced, especially when I work with women, is that Past experiences, past pain, past hurt, make it difficult for a woman to trust in the future. Mm -hmm. It's the trust issue. And the inability to have that open, available, playful, sensual, trusting heart, which is natural to a woman's soul. It's just, that's just what the feminine is. What keeps that from being able to flow is that they have had pain or hurt in the past. There's baggage, right? Um, Eckhart Tolle calls it pain body. The yogic Hindu tradition calls it the samskara, the, the, the impressions from the past. They block our energy. They make it difficult to meet the next person with an open, available heart, because the last person or the last number of people, perhaps even back to your childhood, have hurt you so deeply that you're very suspicious. You're, you're maybe overly cautious, um, guarded, kind of a wall around you, right? 
Um, I don't know if I'm the first one to say this, but I always say that walls, they keep you safe, but they keep you single, right? So the conversation about, you know, the secret sauce is being able to trust. And we can talk about what that means. But what makes that impossible is when you haven't been able to let go of or process or fully deal with the stuff that's happened in the past. And so if all that past is still alive in you, then the next person that you meet um, is either going to feel it or you might not even let the relationship develop to the point where they could feel it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is so, you're spot on, Roy, because, you know, I work, in my work with single women, I work mainly with a little more mature women, 40s, 50s, 60s. And a lot of these women obviously have been through disappointing relationships or painful relationships or things that haven't worked out. In fact, it was interesting, it's so interesting that we're having this conversation because I was speaking with a woman earlier today and in sharing her experience about her past relationships and everything, there was so much disappointment, so much pain, and it was like, even like anger, right? Yes. And we were talking about that and how I might be able to help her. And, you know, we talked about this and how it's like if she's approaching a new relationship or a new opportunity with all that stuff, it's like if I had my glasses and they were full of mud. Um, I wouldn't be able to see very well. It's kind of like, you know, it really taints our vision. It really, it, it really taints how we energetically show up, how we, how someone, a man in this case would experience a woman. And we oftentimes will project this stuff onto a new potential partner. Like we're projecting this hurt, this pain, this disappointment from the past onto a brand new innocent person who is not the cause or the source of any of that stuff. So, and like you're saying, when all that is there, it's impossible for a woman to be in that light, playful, joyful energy and or to trust the man or the process of a relationship naturally developing, evolving and unfolding. I, that was beautiful. I couldn't say it better myself. That is exactly true. And that is the reason it's important is I'm sure everybody viewing this has heard of different relationship strategies and things that, you know, how to meet guys and what to say or how to flirt and all of that. And all of that's fine, but none of that will work if you have that going on underneath. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Getting down to the root cause of what can stand between you and a, a new relationship, you, you got to go to the root and deal with that. And then those other dating strategies or whatever you want to call them, that those techniques, they can be fruitful. But if you, if you, if you don't, you know, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot. So absolutely Roy because it, we can be doing all the so quote unquote right things on the outside right. in the in the physical real world but if our inner if what's going on inside our thoughts our feelings that anger that disappointment right. that hurt if all of those things are are kind of managing things kind of on an unconscious level we may not even be aware of it but they may be running the show then it doesn't matter if we're doing all the right things quote unquote right things on the outside because we're going to be sabotaging ourselves without meaning to uh, based on that internal game so to speak right right and i think we should make this clear that um it is perfectly understandable if you have pain from your past. Right. So I hope nobody hears us talking about we're judging you or shaming you or that nothing bad happened to you, right? No, you had some things happen to you. No one's dismissing that. And it is powerful um, and it's real and your pain is real. And if, if it stays alive, it's going to continue to sabotage you, right? 
So I, I just want everyone to feel that we're not disrespecting your past and saying, you know, you should just, oh, it's no big deal. No, it's a big deal. But there are ways of dealing with that, sort of letting go of the past in a way that you can approach all of life with an open, available heart. Like, what's new? Like, what's this adventure going to be like? And, and, and find, and we may get to this, find an understanding of what trust really means and how it works in relationship. We'll, I think we're going to get to that. At, yeah, at yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yes, I think it's really important for everyone to know that we're coming at this from a place of compassion. I mean, I was single for a very long time in my life. And I went through a lot of those disappointments and those relationships that didn't work out and experienced some of that hurt. And there were times I felt angry. So when I was speaking to this woman earlier today, I understood where she was coming from. She's just frustrated and angry as to why this feels so hard for her and why this has been such a difficult area in her life. And yet, um, I think one of the hardest things to do, in addition to trusting men and trusting the process of getting to know someone in a healthy way, is also forgiving ourselves for these perceived or real mistakes that we feel like we've made. Yes, there may be some forgiveness uh, in terms of other people that might have disappointed or hurt us, but a lot of times I think the hardest thing is forgiving ourselves. We can beat ourselves up over and over again and say, oh, how could you have done that? How could you have chosen the wrong man again? Or how could you have ignored that red flag or whatever? We beat ourselves up over and over again. So it's interesting because I just released another interview on my YouTube channel, all centered around forgiveness and release and hurt from the past, because clearing that doesn't mean we have to be perfect. It doesn't mean that what happened to us wasn't real, but clearing that is a big part of what creates that capacity or that ability for us to move forward. And that's really where we're coming from. We want to help people move forward. So I want to go deep into your view on this though, Roy, in terms of this whole piece around trust. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about trust and then specifically share with us why it's so important from the man's perspective, why that's such a big deal to a man for a woman to trust. Well, the first, the first reason why it's so important to a man is that even though we're very often not given credit for our intuition and our ability to feel and connect, Men may not be able to articulate things, but they can sense things. So it's important because when you're meeting someone new, if, if you have a wall, if you have kind of a guardedness, uh, a suspiciousness, um, if, you're, if you're starting the relationship from, and you might not consciously say it this way, but, but listen close. When you have some stuff from the past still alive, you start a new relationship from, I don't trust you yet. You're going to have to earn my trust. You're going to have to prove it. Now, you might not look a guy in the eye on the first date and say, you got to prove yourself to me. <laughs> right? But you're sending that energy. There's a way that that that. You, you, you maybe make the relationship move more slowly than it could. There's, a, there's an attitude that says sort of, you know, stay away. I don't, I don't trust you. I don't know what your agenda is. I don't know what you're up. I don't know what you really want. Are you a player? Are you for real? Do you really have a job? Are you live in your mother's basement and play video games all day? Right. You know, because I've had that happen in the past. I've had all these things. So I don't want to make that mistake again. So we push away and we say, I don't trust you yet until you prove it. Now, a man can sense that. And a good man will understand that, have compassion for it. But a good man most likely is not going to want to break through all those walls and have to deal with all the guys in the past that have hurt you. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not my fault. Why am I being held responsible for what your ex did or for what your father did? Right. So I often joke 
and it's sort of funny, but I don't mean it funny, that I've yet to see a good man bring a sledgehammer to a date, you know, ready to break down your walls. I feel your walls and I'm going to crap. You know, like, most guys will just go to that girl over there who's got her arms wide open, her heart's wide open, and she's available to dance. So that's the major thing is men can feel it just like women can feel stuff from men. Men can feel if there's some guardedness or closure or suspicion and that you're kind of keeping them at arm's length. Now that doesn't mean you don't have any boundaries and you have sex on the first date. Don't don't misunderstand. Right. Right. But, But there's a difference between starting a relationship, even like internet dating or nowadays, you know, the pandemic and so forth. Hopefully when you're listening to this in July, we're recording it a little before July, Um, that we're dating by Zoom, first meetings and stuff like that. When you start from a place of, I don't trust you, you've got to prove it, that's a problem. The, The way to start it is like, I trust you. My heart is open to you. I don't know you, but my heart is open and available within reason and boundaries. But I'm wide open here. I mean, my arm's wide open. And I'm going to trust you until you show me that I can't. Then I'm going to kick you in the balls and send you down the road. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I think, oh, it's a totally different energy. And I think, you know, most women are going to be thinking, well, I, I don't do that. I don't show up with that distrusting energy. But I had another conversation and it sounded something like, well, when a man steps up and shows me that I can trust him, then I'll be able to relax into that energy of being able to trust him. Until then, I'm not. So you're saying, what you're saying is so true. Even if a woman's not consciously saying that or thinking that, energetically, it's easy to show up that way, especially on the heels of disappointment, hurt, that relationships that haven't worked out, we're kind of like, you know, okay, I'm not getting into that situation again, because that was painful. So you're going to have to really show me before I'm going to trust you. And that's an energy that, like you said, most men, most men that are dealing with women in good faith are not going to show up with that sledgehammer to break down that wall. They're just going to go to someone who is more able to be more open and is not making them guilty before they've even done anything. <laughs> right. Correct. Because what attracts, you know, what, what the masculine soul sort of longs for, and this is a good little conversation to have, what the feminine soul longs for is to be seen because the feminine is radiance. Externally, the feminine wants to adorn herself with beauty. Why? Because she wants to be seen. But there's a, an emotional beauty. There's a heart to be seen more than just body. There's a mind to be seen, right? So the feminine wants to be noticed, wants to, to be recognized for her heart, for her radiance. She wants to be seen, right? Mm-hmm. Likewise, the masculine wants to be trusted. That's, to the same degree, a woman wants to be seen and valued and appreciated and noticed for more than her beauty, but for her heart, is the same degree to a man that he wants to be trusted. He wants to be felt like, I can let go, I can surrender, that's a loaded word, but He wants to feel a woman saying, I can be with you. I can relax. I can fall into you. I can surrender. And you've got me. You've got us. I trust you. Not just I trust you not to cheat on me. I mean, a man wants to be trusted like his whole way of life, his his beingness, his character is trusted. Okay? And when you have some things in your past, it makes it difficult to give the man what he most wants. And the secret sauce of the, of the feminine is her ability to give that trust, to relax open into that. But when the past is alive, you can't do that. So a man is wanting to be with you, but he's sort of 
kind of wants to get something from you. In a sense, he, he wants to feel that you'll trust him. Just like if you want to be with a man, you want him to see you, not be distracted, not be in his own head somewhere, not, not you know, lack presence. You want him to be with you, to hear, to listen, to connect with your heart, right? And, and if he can't see you, you're going to just be not interested. I want to share, um, if I can do a screen share real quick. Sure, I think it's sure absolutely. It's a short quote from my book. So my new book, Relationship Bootcamp, which everyone's going to get for free at the end of this. We'll let you know I know that. that's so great. We're so excited. And yes, we can see your screen share. Yeah. Okay. So when a feminine person's energy is unblocked, and in context of the book, it's unblocked when you let go of the past, you know, then the, the flow comes. It's like your past is, is like clogging up an artery. It just, it blocks the flow and you're going to die. <laughs> okay. So a feminine person's energy is unblocked and the chi or the shakti or spirit is flowing through her body. It appears as radiance. And her deepest desire is to be seen. Likewise, when a masculine person's energy is unblocked, because we block ourselves in other ways, his energy is flowing. It appears as presence, and his deepest desire is to be trusted. Therefore, a satisfying and fulfilling relationship is one in which the masculine person sees the feminine, and the feminine person trusts the masculine. If you learn how to give the other person, what they most long to receive, they'll want to be with you. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. If you learn how to give the other person what they most long to receive, they'll want to be with you. It's as simple as that. Feminine people need to learn how to give trust. And that means understanding what that is, but then it also means getting rid of the blockages that make it impossible to give that trust. Yeah. I'd like to talk first about what it means to trust, if I could. Before we do that, Roy, can I interject just a short little story here that I think really illustrates what you did? I'm going to share one too, so that's great. Okay. Is that okay if I share one and then you can share yours too? Yeah. Yeah. This just reminded me so much of this uh, conversation I had once when I was interviewing John Gray, and he was telling me about how he, when he originally was dating his wife, Bonnie and how he really liked her, but he wasn't yet quite sure, you know, whether this was going to be the relationship that went the distance. And he shared this story with me that I think really illustrates this trust point that you're talking about so beautifully. They had gone on some kind of road trip and they were traveling through the night and somehow he got totally lost, totally on the wrong road. And he ended up not only in the, on the wrong, long, wrong freeway, he ended up totally in the wrong state. That's how lost he was, right? So he, his, his uh, then girlfriend, Bonnie, had been kind of asleep during most of the night as they'd been traveling. And she woke up and there was a beautiful sunset And he kind of sheepishly said, you know, I've kind of taken us on a detour here and uh, we're not only a little less, but we're in totally the wrong state. And she said, she said, I have no idea where we are, but I'm so happy and so blessed to wake up to this beautiful sunset. So in other words, she was like completely trusting. She wasn't freaked out that they were totally lost in the wrong state. And he said that was the moment for him that he knew he wanted to marry her. Yeah. Yeah, she was kind of communicating that, I trust you, you got this. And wherever we have ended up is beautiful. Um, yeah, and, and I'm just happy to be with you, and yeah. I accept you, and you're human, I'm human, and I'm just happy to be with you. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. I have a story that's the opposite of that. And okay. If we put it together, it might be powerful for the viewer. And I should say, This issue of trust and surrender, these are huge issues that have so many angles to them. So if 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 we're poking you, like if you're like, ooh, I think this is an issue of mine, then just reach out to Michelle or to me because we're not gonna be able to fix all of this in 20 minutes or something like that. 
uh, I'm hoping this spurs curiosity, like how do I work on this and so forth. So having said that, I once met, I came in contact with a woman who wanted to work with me. And while most of my clients are, they're all over the world. Um, this one was local in the, in the Chicago area. And as we were chatting about setting up a time to talk to each other, to explore if we would be a good fit, she just mentioned she was going to an event that I was also going to. Okay, same night, same time. So I said, well, why don't we just meet up before that? We'll talk for an hour and then we'll go to the event together because I'm going too. Great. So we meet up and we're having this great conversation. And what she basically told me was that, well, first I should say, this was a woman who was um, a very successful entrepreneur and business owner. She was quite articulate, obviously intelligent, and she was pretty damn hot, okay? <laughs> she's like in her early 40s, and she made good money, she's smart, and she was pretty funny, she was good looking, and she's telling me, Roy, my issue is I can't get past the first or second date. I, I get plenty of dates. Men ask me out all the time. We go out once, we go out twice, and it just they disappear. They don't call me back. It doesn't go anywhere. And she's like, I have, like, what's going on? Okay, so we talked all about that, and that there's a number of dynamics that can be involved in that kind of thing. And so it was getting close to the end of the hour. Okay, and um, we agreed to work with each other. And as, as soon as we sort of made our agreement together, she basically said, okay, okay, Roy, um, um, we got to go. It's, it's time for the event to start. And um, could I borrow your coat? Because I think it's cold outside and I, 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 might, I might be chilly. So we stood up and I took off my jacket. And I said, here you go. And as I handed it to her, I said, that's why you're single. Right to her face. And she was just stunned. She said, wait, what? Said, that's why you're single. What do you mean? And it's better if I just read it to you out of my book. Sure. Right? Real sure. short. Sure. Her name was Melissa. It's not. Melissa, I decided a long time ago that when we left, I was going to offer you my coat. The sun was setting. I thought it might be cold out there, and I didn't think you were dressed for it. I was actually feeling good about myself, that I was noticing your needs, and I was enjoying the opportunity to take care of you. I was also paying attention to the time. I was moving our conversation along, ensuring that we'd have enough time to connect, but also not be late for our event. I said, Melissa, this isn't a romantic date, but as a masculine being, I love paying attention to you and the needs of the moment. I'm built for that. But when you stood up and told me it was time to go and asked for my coat, you took that away from me. You became the man in that moment, directing our relationship. And in so doing, you put me in the feminine role of responding to your direction. And I felt my energy drop. I experienced a flash of anger and sadness, something like, oh, I wanted to offer her my coat. And damn it, I know what time it is. You didn't let me be a man for you, Melissa. You didn't let me think of you and care for you. That's a huge turnoff. And I guarantee you that's why you're not getting past the first or second date. Men are feeling what I just felt, that you wanna be the man. Now, granted, this take charge persona of yours serves you well in your work life, but it's killing your love life. Because what you just said to me was, I don't trust you to know what I need, nor do I trust you to guide our lives in this moment. I have to do it. I have to figure out what I need, and I have to keep things on track. In other words, Melissa, you essentially told me that you're a better man than I am, that you trust your masculine more than mine. So why would I, or any man, want to be with you? Okay, so um, 
That's how trust can be expressed in such subtle things that she wasn't just there with me, letting go of, I got to take care of myself and I got to keep everything on track. What she does at work all day, beautifully, right? But when she was around a masculine energy, she, wa she wasn't able to sort of let go of that and say, I trust this guy. And if we're late, well, we're late, you know? But I was paying attention. I was ready for that. And it was like, it just deflated me because I, I was like, I'm thinking of her. I, she's wearing a little sleeveless thing. We're in Chicago. The sun's gone. She's going to be cold. And I was feeling good. I'm going to give her my coat. Like be, you know, a really present man, you know, and be, be warm and caring about her. And she took it away from me by being in charge of everything herself. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was why she wasn't, I, in my, and I did work with her then. And we worked on that for a couple of months. And, but that was what I discovered. And it was confirmed as we worked together was the reason these guys were not staying with her. She thought, oh, I'm just intimidating because I'm beautiful and I make a lot of money. And I said, no, they're intimidating because you won't let them be a man. You won't let them take care of you. They, you won't let them give their presence to you, to pay attention to you. You're, you're paying attention to you, right? So that's, that's a powerful thing. But of course, you can't be that way if you don't trust, if you've got stuff from your past to where I don't trust you to take care of me because nobody's been paying attention to me. So I got to do it, right? So no judgment if you can relate to that story. But that will block you from attracting a superior, a, a good man. Because that's, that's what we love to do with women. And yeah. if you won't let us, we're pretty much going to find someone who will. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some subtleties and nuances to this, too, because I think for a lot of women, I am one, so I know I can speak uh, from that point of view. I think sometimes when we are kind of being more directional or kind of, you know, taking the lead or kind of making what we consider to be suggestions or that sort of thing, we don't necessarily feel like we're coming across that way. Like I suspect Melissa did not necessarily initially until you worked with her right. think that oh, she was coming yeah. across that way at all. She yeah, was no a, idea. Yeah, a complete blind spot um, for her. And sometimes it's kind of subtle. And, you know, just between us, Roy, I know from speaking to a lot of women, a lot of us feel like we could do things a little better, a little faster, a little more efficiently. And you know what? Maybe we could. Yes, okay, could. we'll even grant ourselves that. However, if we don't allow for that opportunity or we don't allow that space for that man to step up in that way like you already intended to, then we squelch that motivation. Like you said, you felt that disappointment. You felt that like, wow, I had this and now it's all been taken away from me kind of feeling. Right. And so there's, you know, there's a bit of a subtlety in, in this that I think a lot of women are coming across more in their interactions with men, more masculine than they really think or believe that they are. Like, I do think this is a huge blind spot for a lot of women. And I know it was for me in certain respects uh, back when I was single. I mean, this has been a huge learning curve for me going through all of my years of single and then now being married for the past 13 years and do how to do it perfectly all the time now, no, but I do it a lot better. And, and it, and it, this really, really resonates. So I know also, can I ask you a follow-up question to this? Absolutely. I know there are women listening. I know there are some who are saying, yeah, but what if it hasn't been my experience that even if I'm not making the suggestion or taking the lead, that a man will step up into that? Like, what if, what about all these men that women feel like they're experiencing who are not aware of their needs or who are not going to give them their coat, right? You know, I mean, I know that question is going through some minds right now. Right, right. Well, yes, you're going to meet people who are not worthy of your radiance and not worthy of your devotion. Mm -hmm. They're not worthy of your heart and you just have to let them go. Okay. So that's the one thing. There are men who are mediocre. They're not trustable. Like the, 
for a woman to trust a man who's not trustable is insane. Mm -hmm. Okay. So on some level, um, a man's got to be worthy of that. However, there's that dynamic is if you start from the place where I don't think you're trustable, you know, and you got to prove it to me kind of thing. Well, then that trustable man is, is probably not going to spend a lot of time trying to prove himself to you. Well, I got to prove myself to you. I mean, I am who I am, right? So that's, that's the one thing. Sometimes you bump into men that are not worthy of you or your trust. Other times, I hate to say this. Because the law of attraction is so misused. It's, God, there's so much garbage with it. Um, I take it the task in my new book a little bit. Um, but the essence of what it means is like attracts like. You attract after your own kind. Now, the beauty, so the, the benefit of that is as radiant as you are, you will attract a man who is as trustable. So if you're not very radiant, if you're all blocked up and clogged up and sort of dark and untrusting, then you'll probably attract a mediocre man because like attracts like. So you don't have to actually ask the question, how do I attract this man of character and trustability? No, no, no. All you got to do is work on your own radiance. The brighter your shine automatically right? That's what's good about it. You don't have to go, where do I find this? No, that's not the question. I mean, do the, do the flowers in the field talk to each other? You know, they flap their petals. <laughs> where do you find a good bee? Where are all the good bees? No, they just sit there. They look pretty and they smell good. Then they just trust the bees will find them, right? And what do bees do? That's what bees do. They look for flowers to pollinate, <laughs> <laughs> right? So all you need to do is make sure you're a beautiful, pretty smelling flower and the bees will find you because that's what we're built to do. And the, so the benefit there is you can control, you can control the quality of men in your life because you will only attract after your own kind. So the question is not how do I find this guy who's trustable? It's how do I become a more radiant woman? And that means primarily, how do I let go of the blockages, the junk from the past, mm -hmm. so that I can be out in the world and smell pretty, <laughs> look pretty, have that, have that, have the petals that man, men want to come land on and come be around because it's, it's just what we do with each other. Does that make sense? Well, absolutely. And the feminine radiance, when a woman is really centered in her feminine radiance, she's also really centered in knowing her own value. And that's not dependent upon what a man is or isn't doing, but she Great. will likely just let that man that doesn't show up in that way for her go. She's not going to be interested or, or invest her. <laughs> She's, yeah, she's not going to invest her time and energy in that. And so it's like, yeah, it, we're, we're actually creating a polarity. As a woman goes more into her feminine radiance, that's going to attract the more kind of masculine man that wants to be in partnership with her. So it's yeah. like the opposite sides of the magnet. So if your experience, and this is one of the reasons I brought up this question, if your experience, ladies, is of men who are not showing up for you, in part, it may be because you're operating a little more on the masculine side, and it's like a, trying to do a dance with both people leading. You're going to step on each other's toes. Yeah. Or you're not allowing the time and space for him to do it in the way that he would normally do it because we get thinking we can do it better, faster, more efficiently, more effectively. Yeah. And or um, there's this these blockages from the past that we've been talking about. So some of those things are just worth exploring. And, you know, doing some internal, some internal, uh, uh, you know, investigation into what might be going on for you. Yeah. yeah. If you can experience that. A lot of my work is helping feminine creatures discover the variety of ways they can be blocking their energy flow and diminishing their radiance. And um, the, the letting go of the past is the biggest one. That's the one that 
keeps you from feeling a freedom in your body and, a, and an openness towards all of life, but especially men. Um, so that whole topic of letting go of the past and trust, I mean, if you want to attract a really good man, put more of attention on you and what's going on in you than it, and it is about where do I find him? Because he's going to find you. The bees will find the flowers. So focus on your flowerness. And that's what I do with my clients. Help them be, become radiant women. And so, you know, you remember that the, the uh, wasn't it the, the statue of David? Michelangelo carved the statue of David. I yeah. believe there's a quote. They said, how did, you, how did you make that beautiful creature? And all he said was, I took a look at this piece of stone and I chipped away everything that wasn't David. Yep. See that? Yeah, so but inside, it's the most ama- and it's the most amazing statue. And so I yeah, I think that's so I think that's so it's beautiful. in there. It's in there. I just gotta raise I got rid of the stuff that didn't belong, right? So every woman is a radiant woman. You just got some stuff in there that doesn't belong. So the spiritual path is never about becoming something trying to be someone you're not or take on some, some qualities. No, the spiritual path is always letting go of something. And then it's like the sun's always shining, but sometimes the clouds block it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the women should be asking yourself, what's, what clouds are in my life that are blocking my shine? Because that's what he's going to respond to. Mm-hmm. And he's going to come land over here on me and so forth. So yeah, that's, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and to go for and to go full circle with this, Roy, this is how a woman really gets to have that feeling of being seen because then she's seen for her her real authentic yes. beautiful self. Yeah. And she's seen by a man in a way where she's not pretending, she's not feeling like she has to do all the work or the heavy lifting. She's just being this beautiful, radiant version of herself. So she gets to be seen by the right kind of man. Beautiful. Exactly. Yeah, I love this topic, as you can tell. I think we both share, we have a shared passion for this topic because I think we work a lot with with women who are really, really, it might be a blind spot and it's really wreaking havoc in their love life. So when we're talking about this, it's from a place of great compassion and really wanting to support and um, I love this topic. It's really, really one of my favorite things to talk about because like you in my work and with my clients, so often this is an area that we focus on that can make such a huge difference. Oh, it's, it's everything. Mm-hmm. It's not just in attracting a man, but you get to live your own authentic life. I mean, you're just in your own happiness being who you were born to be. It's The point is not really the man. The point is your own aliveness. The payoff is he's going to want to come land on you. Okay. But this is not about trying to get him. That's, that's not radiant. Radiance is I just want to let go of all my junk and all my past and my fears and anxieties and be present, be radiant, be alive. And just because it's, it's pure happiness. And I know that you probably have a number of you know, tools and techniques to help women go through the, you know, we haven't scratched the surface. I got so much. Right. We could spend three, four hours easily going through the ways to be, to let go of stuff from the past and so forth. So yeah, I'm, I'd love to follow up with anybody and go deeper because we just, yeah, we just scratched the surface and tried to help. I wanted the viewer to walk away from this saying, do I have trust issues? Um, do I need to let go of something? Am I as radiant as I could be? If you're asking that, I've succeeded. And then if you want to follow up with us, well, then that's what we do. It'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, Roy, I love this conversation. I'm so grateful that we were able to have it. And it feels so timely because it's really, you know, I actually taught a class last week on feminine energy secrets and then now we're having this conversation after a conversation I had today about this woman who is expressing her frustration and even anger 
about what's happening. So it feels like like all the stars are aligning and this is the messaging that's coming forth right now. So I'm really actually very excited about that because it feels really cool to me when it feels like, okay, this is the message people need to hear right now comes forward in a variety of ways. Because sometimes, as you know, just hearing something a little differently or from a different point of view can make something like that click. So I'm super excited we had this conversation. Yeah. And I'm also really excited because I know you have a really wonderful and really generous free gift that you have never offered before, right? And right. before this man of the month interview, and it will be available. So tell everybody about it. Yeah, you know, I've written three books. And on occasion, I've given away the other two. But my newest book, which has only been out for about eight months, I've never given it as a gift. I've never made it available for free. And so I'll probably at the bottom of the screen here where you're watching, there's going to be a link that you can get my, my new book, Relationship Boot Camp. Okay, so I use a fitness metaphor, you know, to say you go to the gym to try to get in good physical shape, to feel good, look good, and have energy in your body. Well, what about getting in relationship shape? Right. I mean, most of us are not in very good relationship shape, which is why our relationships haven't been very good. And trust me, I was obese when it comes to relationship fitness. But I hired a coach and I got in relationship shape and my wife and I are doing great. So this book sort of examines um, what I call the seven relationship muscles that got to be strong if you want to not only attract the relationship, but make it go the distance. Hey, attracting a relationship is not that hard. Making it go a lifetime, that, that's a whole different ball game. And too much of the relationship world, here's my little rant, too much of the relationship world is all about how to get you a date, how to create attraction, how to meet someone, where to go, what to say. Okay, well, then they're standing right in front of you. You've, they're right there. Are you ready? To make this thing become a very healthy, sustainable relationship? So I often ask my clients, do you want another short-term thing? <laughs> Those are painful. You want another two-month relationship, another six-month relationship? You want to just keep going around in that circle? I meet a guy, and then he goes here, and it eh, falls apart. Um, so this book is more about making sure that when you get to the starting line of, you know, meeting someone that you're ready to go the distance. It's like running a marathon and not getting in shape. You're on the starting line. You're not going to make it if you're not in shape. And when you meet a person, that's sort of the starting line. But if you're not in good relationship shape, if those seven muscles are not developed, then it's not going to go anywhere. So it's kind of a relationship fitness book. And for July man of the month, I'm giving it away for free. Yeah, so everyone that's watching, I just want to let you know, you'll click on the link in the description underneath this video, and that's where you'll get the link to Roy's book. And Roy, I want to give you a chance to give us kind of the last word. Okay, great, great. Thank you for that. And this is a shameless plug. I'll admit it, but I believe this from the bottom of my heart. If you've got some pain from the past, if you've been betrayed, deceived, ghosted, gaslighted, hurt, right? If you've been hurt, that is affecting your ability to attract a healthy, sustainable relationship. And I've never seen anyone, including me, be able to process the past and let it go without the help of a professional. I've just never seen it. So if you've got some pain from the past, you need to work with someone. Okay, I'd love to work with you. But if it's Michelle or if it's someone else, but you have to sort of look backwards before you can look forwards so that your heart is open and you have a clean emotional slate. And so read my book. That'll get you started. And then follow up with me and maybe we can go deeper. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Roy. I've really loved this conversation and this topic I think is so, so important. And we're so happy that you're our July man of the month. 
I really appreciate all that you shared. <laughs> Thank God I didn't have to take my shirt off or show you anything. <laughs> yeah, no speedos required here. No speedos. Oh God, uh, well, that, that makes me sick to visualize that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for watching. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click on the red button and the bell and get Roy's gift. And we'll see you soon for more Man of the Month videos. Bye for now. Bye-bye.